Hey folks, Paul Roberts here uh, with the first of our fall transition video fishing journals for 2019. For the background short course on the fall transition, see our previous journal, uh, video fishing journal number 25. Uh, you might even want to see that one first for a more in-depth understanding of what we're about to head into here. I know this uh, is a, a little bit late in coming out, but that's sometimes the way the ball bounces. Um, got a lot on my plate. Uh, and these video fishing journals are not uh, meant to be vlogs, but instead in-depth coverage of specific topics. I see the Nature of Fishing uh, channel as an archive of topics that can be referred to um, each and every year. Uh, the same general things just happen to come around again and again each year. Uh, funny how that is. <laughs> and this is how I've always used my 40 plus years of written fishing journals, referring back to what was happening on a given water body uh, in previous years, uh, which allows me to ballpark that dialing in process that we often must go through on any given fishing day. Okay, our first outing here fell right in the thick of the fall vegetation die-off, uh, that funky soup period of plant decay in this year's fall transition laboratory pond nailed it perfectly. It's, it's usually a pretty, pretty short window of time, too. This pond is a shallow dishpan contoured pond that's heavily vegetated through the summer months. This outing, however, found this normally clear water pond, a milky gray-brown in, in water color of varying density throughout the pond due to all that decomposing plant material. Uh, no, noted decomposition uh, events were uh, browning and disintegrating vegetation, uh, bacterial scums across the surface, uh, flocculated material suspended in the water column, and uh, very likely a plankton bloom thrown in, all together making, uh, uh, really affecting that clear water pond, making the water clarity uh, quite reduced. And after an hour or so of throwing lures on and into that funky soup, uh, and into known carnage zone spots, I do know this pond reasonably well, not a single strike. Uh, at least at first. I came gung-ho and equipped for some aggressive fall action with buzz baits, spinner baits, uh, lipless crank baits, and active topwaters. But the water appeared dead. <laughs> there wasn't so much as a single rising bluegill out there. It was so quiet, uh, so lifeless seeming, um, and the signs of decomposition were so heavy in places that I began to suspect an early morning oxygen deficit was, was at play um, at, at some level. As aquatic plants die, they stop producing oxygen. As they decompose, the resulting water turbidity cuts light penetration further, cutting photosynthesis even more. Each night, photosynthesis from the remaining live plants in the pond shuts down completely, of course. Further, the populations of bacteria that do much of the decomposition work uh, explodes, takes off. And they use oxygen too. All this extra respiration going on in that pond can lower the, wa the water's pH, uh, making it more acidic, which can inhibit the ability of a fish's blood to carry oxygen. Altogether, these conditions can inhibit fish activity. Uh, and the signs today indicated a pretty intense decomposition event was in progress. Now, I'm not quick to assume the worst. Uh, I don't need to start things off with a counterproductive mindset. I don't carry an oxygen meter, and largemouths in general tend to handle oxygen deficits better than most fishes as oxygen levels commonly um, yo-yo in such fertile, heavily vegetated waters. So, I simply make note of the conditions and proceed as planned, at least at first, assuming all's well, until things prove otherwise. Then, uh, if I ballpark this water correctly before arriving, I should have tackle with me that I can adapt with. So, with an apparently lifeless water body in front of me, I started exploring. Uh, looking for better looking conditions. And I found a major weed bed that was structurally more or less intact in pond center and surrounded by deeper, uh, deeper open water. It is a shallow, shallow body of water. Um, that is having uh, roughly three feet or so of open water above that carpet of coontail instead of 18 inches to two feet. Um, and, and the area had, had better water clarity. And I turned the first fish there. 
on a, a slow bulged spinnerbait uh, with big Colorado blades to slow that thing down. Uh, and that fish didn't just rush over and crash that spinnerbait either. Um, it was a follower. So I took the nod and followed up with a soft jerk bait and scored a 19 incher. Um, that was a nice way to start the day, uh, of a day of making, making lemonade, essentially. I then paid careful attention, of course, to the ensuing bites that I, that I received um, and found they came on the fall, okay, when the lure was dropping. I ended up waking the bait, okay, across the surface uh, to draw attention. Um, uh, and, and that's the attraction part of, of, of things. And then let it fall. to incite the bites, and that's the trigger. There's one. Our bass were on the lethargic side, um, but later in the day, a few hooked bass actually did some jumping, uh, which is a great sign telling me that things are kind of perking up. Uh, another thing that we should take note of, and that's checking the bass's body condition. Uh, people ask me you know, why I do that, what I'm looking for. I look for a number of things, but this is a good demonstration in this journal. These were healthy fish, but on the thin side and basically looking like summer fish. And indeed they were, uh, being still early in the early part of the fall transition. As the fall pr progresses, okay, as our transition series progresses here, we're going to keep track of this and, and I'll show you the difference. During my explorations, I also spotted bass along some shorelines, uh, shorelines with cover. The evening incident shoreline, that's, that's the west shoreline, had a rather spectacular sounding carnage zone pop up in the late afternoon. Um, I could hear those bass uh, busting bluegills in there. However, I was already busy in Pond Center, um, in and around those major remaining weed beds that I'd found. Uh, and uh, as it turned out, I'm glad I stayed there. Temperature is 68. Okay, that's the core temperature. It hasn't changed to, in, in the, that last month. And that's not surprising. And it's only four or five feet deep. So that's just the way water is. It's going to retain its heat and the slow bleed has started. This pond is all soft vegetation. It's an absolute dish pan with no structure. There's one hump over there. I chose it because the fish are a little bigger here and it's been a challenge. I've never put a tube on it. Um, and I know where, uh, pretty much know the pond well enough to know where the bass, where there are some uh, carnage zone areas. And we're going to work through them. My biggest concern is putting fish down, but we'll, we'll take our time. They'll work around, we'll work around each other. Uh, this should be interesting. It's odd there's no bluegills rising. Wow, it's so interesting. Not a touch. Good pond, though. It is a good pond. Yeah, look at that. Look at that brown water. Bacterial. Oxygen depletion over overnight because the vegetation is dying. Pick up in the afternoon, maybe. Kick around and see if we can find some non brown water. Well, is there anybody? Maybe shoreline cover? Yeah, look at this. This is 
not the way this pond has been. I may, I may switch ponds. <sighs> We're gonna tour this pond. I wanna know what's going on here. Let's look. There's a big opening in the weeds there, big opening. There's the rise. That was a little bass, I can tell, because he leapt out, that was a baby bass. Okay, life. I don't think I'm gonna find him yet. Here comes one. I got a bunch of junk on my lure too. All right, we're gonna follow him up with a fluke. All right, that was a good sized wake. Let's Followed it up. Let's try that again. There's one. Oh, he's running for cover. Get him up out of there. Get him up out of there. Whoa, I'm sitting in a coontail bed. It's the problem. <laughs> well, that'll wrap him up. <sighs> All right, I found him. There's multiple fish out there. Yep, don't you dive in there, mama. Whoa. Did I tell you there were bigger bass in this pond? <laughs> least 18 there she is right there yeah not much fight out of her and she is a bit on the thin side look at the size of her mouth so big head and she's lanky but she's thin and she's lacking muscle yeah, what's going on with you guys? Mm. I'm not gonna pump you. I'm gonna leave you be. All right, honey, middle of the pond where the muck has disappeared. All right. There you go, big mama. Okay. Well, that's what we came here for. walking the dog by itself and then it flutters when it falls. Very cool. There's one. Oh! Man! So he hit that on the fall, but boy did he hit it hard. I wonder if that's in competition. I mean, that was a hard smack. Okay, you're coming into bass here, Paul. I'm seeing bluegills and hearing them and catch them now. Is 
it swims, it wakes, man. Maybe that's what you should do with it. Wake it and drop it. Oh, boy. All right, that worked pretty nicely. Not a big fish. But a lively dude. I'll say. There you are. <laughs> Come on in here. You've been caught before. All right, how'd that go? That went. In and out again. That's a bummer. There. All right. He's been eat. He's been eating. Okay, honey. Here you go. Hey, this is great. I'm liking this. Look at that wake. Look at that sinuous wake. And then it falls. I'm thinking I should wake on the surface and drop into pockets. It wakes beautifully and it'll look good against the surface. So let's try it. Real slowly, and it should. There's one. Oh! Okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go up and rod, because this is working out, but um, I can't cast far with this rod. It's not strong enough. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, it looks. Pretty darn good, I just skipped it. Excellent. There it is. Dart and fall. There's one. Good one too. Come on. Well, not that good a one. A regular old bass. <laughs> You're a skinny thing. You were back under there. All right, what are we gonna do here? How'd you take it? How did you take that? Wow, it's hooked right in. Against the barb, or against the bend. Okay, there it is. <sighs> Almost 14 inches, but really thin. All right, hon. All right. Sneaky wake and fall. There's one. Whoa, that's cool. You can really see them out here. Oh, trying to dive in, eh? No diving in, buddy. All right. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, pretty thing. 
And another deep hook. Glad I might took that barb down. Whoa. Nothing in the gut, but yes. Yeah, you've been feeding some. All right. There you go. All right, how did that one take? I think it was a pause after I was swimming it. Once again. Man, I'm gonna have to glue this guy pretty soon. It's holding up surprisingly well. All right, let's see if there's somebody else where that guy came from. Man, there's fish. Get the edge of this stuff. Did he miss it? Nope, he's got it. <laughs> he was coming toward me. Oh, he buried. Oh, little guy, sort of. <laughs> well, hello there. Hello there, little fella. Exact same spot. Yep, and you guys are getting fed out here a little bit. Not greatly, but. <sighs> Not bad. Doing okay, some of them. <clears throat> That's live coontail. See how green that is? Good, here comes the... There we go. It's on the drop again. Seems that that's what it's all about, mostly. <laughs> well, they are a lot thinner than that other pond. They just don't have the brakes to feed off of. Okay. Scoot. I think I'm gonna replace this. Let it dry and glue it. it does make a killer wake. Okay, we're gonna wake this flat. That's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna hit the holes. Oh, there's a wake behind it. Got him. That was cool. It's a good fish too. Oh, don't you dare. That was pretty cool. I got to tease him into striking. Another thin fish with a big head. I wonder if it's the same one. Hey, don't you dive down in there. I'm out, I'm out, break off. Oh, she's hung up in there. There we go. Mm, okay. You are not the same fish. Boy, you took that deep, man. Just shy of the gill. All right, get me my stats. Hang tight, honey. Yep, there it is, shy of the gill, good. Oh, another 18 plus. No food in there. 
Yeah. Oops. Turn that camera up, man. Oh yeah, that's a pretty fish. Not gonna pump you. Not gonna bother. You're a bluegill hunter here. <sighs> All right, sweetie. Let's send you back. Well, there's fish out in the middle of the pond. And I'm right to retie that. There's one. That's a good fish. It came up. <laughs> that was a good strike. He ran up up behind it. But he engulfed it. And it's not big. <laughs> but it was a good strike. So. <sighs> yeah. Pretty thing. <laughs> Adios, fella. That was a great strike. Just a great strike. He came up behind it and whoomph. That's one. Uh, okay, I got a pot of... They take it deep, they just inhale it. Really good, I took that barb down, I'll tell you. Kind of a golden colored thing. Adios. Big Mama. <laughs>